it's time to mow the lawn. So I was thinking to myself, self, wouldn't it be great if I could ask Siri to mow the lawn? Well, unfortunately, guys, I don't have anything to show you on that front yet. But after today's video, I'm hoping to be able to ask Siri to water my lawn. Every episode I share with you guys, I'm excited at the onset because I know at the end of each project, I'll have a new appliance or device that I can control via HomeKit or Siri while I'm home or away. And today's episode is no different. Yes, this video will be no different. First, welcome and thanks for watching. My name is Ray and if you're interested in the HomeKit Smart Home Platform and Apple related tech, please subscribe and tap the bell to get notified when I post new content. And if you find this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. It's very much appreciated. So that was a bit of a blast from the past. And if my video files are correct, I shot that over two years ago. I had planned to cover Orbit bringing their Beehive timers over to HomeKit as they announced that functionality at the 2018 CES. Uh, fast forward today and still no sign of HomeKit on Orbit. Uh, well, in a recent video, I showed how to get Homebridge up and running quite easily on a Raspberry Pi. I'll post a link to that video up here or somewhere down in the description below. Uh, because once again, Homebridge to the rescue. <laughs> up next will be footage from the past of my unboxing, installation, and initial setup of the Beehive timer. Then we'll quickly move to present day and I'll show you how to get this timer into HomeKit via Homebridge and demonstrate how everything functions. Um, and how everything works. So let's start with an unboxing. Let's roll the clip. So hey guys, here we have it. It is the Orbit Beehive Smart Wi-Fi Sprinkler Timer. And this is a six station timer because our irrigation system has six stations. Okay, so let's go ahead and open this box and take a look at the timer itself. So here we have the Orbit Timer itself. It looks like all the current Orbit Timers um, at retail that you'll find and I did want to point out the one significant thing that I learned about these timers that will indicate um, home kit compatibility is if we open the timer up the program button here has a b c and d so the addition of d on that program button and as you can see on the packaging, it doesn't have that. The addition of the D indicates HomeKit compatibility. Um, right now, we're gonna go ahead and go through the installation of this timer. And let's see, I believe there was some literature in the box. And also, I don't want to forget these, the mounting screws, a small screwdriver for the wiring, and some some keys so that we can lock the timer up and the beehive quick start guide so i'm hoping this is going to be an easy install we already have an existing orbit timer um, with the irrigation system that we got when we bought the home and i'm hoping and this is where the wiring goes I am hoping that it'll just be a one-to-one -one wire translation so I'll be able to, to see similarly labeled um, inputs on the existing timer and I'll just be able to translate them over to this. But let's go ahead, go outside, look at the existing timer and get this one installed and go through setup. So let's go ahead and take a look at the existing sprinkler timer we have. Um, it's on the side of the house right here and as you can see it's also in orbit open up i guess i need my keys so for those of you familiar with orbit sprinkler timers you know what this is and how it works um, it's kind of really cumbersome to program and to use um, so i'm really looking forward to getting this new one installed where I can use an app and I don't have to come outside and do it, especially if it's raining and I have to come outside in the rain and hit the rain delay so that sprinklers don't, don't go off. And I can do that remotely from an app and through HomeKit, hopefully. Um, so let me go ahead and take a look at the wiring. So I'm really hoping that this 
since it's also an orbit and six station as well that it is a one-to-one -one direct wire translation um, just from what I can look it looks very similar to the new unit uh, looks like they have sensor um, jumpered and there are wires for one two three four six stations and there's a wire on each and looks like there's a little white wire here on your comm uh, looks like the oh i'm really hoping it looks like the mounting holes might also be in the same place so that would be great if this thing just fit over the new one just fit over the existing not only mounting holes but the wires were the the same and i just had to move them over to the new unit um, so that's what I'm really hoping for. It'll make the job a lot easier. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the new unit, compare it next to this one and see how hard or difficult this job will be. The wiring does look like it's gonna be a direct translation over from the old one to the new one. I'll see if I get lucky on the mounting holes as well. And I may, I'm not sure. Looks like it might, but it could be close, but hopefully uh, Orbit used the same hole placement for the newer timer as they had in the old one. So again, I'm going to go ahead and start by, by taking a photo of the existing wire. They mentioned it in the quick start guide. And I'm going to do it because it's a good idea. So I'm going to go ahead and take a photo with my iPhone of the existing wiring, just in case. I'm going to start by numbering the wires or I'm going to try my best to. And if this doesn't work, I always have the photo to fall back on. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and start unplugging these wires. Okay, so that was a little tricky in tight spaces. You gotta move these up and then pull the wire out. A little difficult to do in small spaces. I need the tools at the end. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to unscrew the existing timer and remove it from the wall. So here's a comparison of the new one and the old one. This is the power cord, and this is the hole where the wires ran through. I'm just gonna go ahead and knock this out um, and run the wires through this hole on the new one. And the mounting holes seem to be very close, so I may be lucky. I might be a slight bit off, but I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed and hope I can use the existing mounting holes. So I popped the hole out for this, just took a screwdriver and Kind of hammered it through softly. So we're gonna run the wires through the hole. And Orbit supplied this small screwdriver to go ahead and loosen these and then tighten them up again. I should pretty much do it. I'm gonna try and drill a hole here and here and see if the screws match. I think they will.
Whoa, so what do you know? Really lucked out with those mounting screws. They had to go in at a slight angle here. This one went straight in, no problem. But it's all mounted, everything's secure. I'll tug at these wires one last time. Everything looks good. All I have to do is plug it in and pull this tab to engage the battery. So plugged in, we'll go ahead and pull this battery tab. And it's on. So here's the app. I already downloaded the Beehive app. So we're gonna go ahead and try and run through setup. So you do have to make a account, which I already did. And let's go ahead and do, this is a new device. It's a timer. My device is powered on. That looks correct. So I'm gonna pick my home network and type in the password. It says connecting the network it might take up to two minutes. So it found the network and now I have to fill in all this um, information. I'll do that. Now it says to give the device a name and take a photo. There we go. Initial setup is finished. Click continue. Select the zones you have physically connected to a device terminal. So they're all of them, all six. So all the testing was done. Everything's set up. It's asking me now if I want to do a uh, smart watering. So like custom or smart, I'm going to do custom for right now so that I can dig deeper into the app and see how everything um, sets up and works. So let's go ahead and take a look at the native Beehive app. It's going to open that up. And here's the native app. If we go on the bottom, we have a few tabs to go through. We have calendar and the calendar will show you the days and dates when programs are enabled and they are color coded. And the second tab will show you the exact programs. And again, they'll align with what's on the timer itself, A, B, C, and D. And these are the zones that are labeled for those uh, program slots. If we go on save programs, um, these are all the different programs that are on there. And if we hit the plus sign, here's where we can create a program. So we can choose the start time, the um, the zones, the days, and then even for how long we want them to water. So let's exit out of that and press the middle button. And these are where all the schedules will show up when you have them. So my next scheduled watering is the front at seven in the morning on Wednesday. And if we tap that middle button again, this will bring up the options to uh, water manually. So there are six zones, one, two, three, four, five, six. And you can see that I, I've also named them um, below. Zone one is lawn, zone two is front shrubs, and etc. So if we choose lawn, this is where I can actually run a manual timer. If I wanted to say water the lawn now, I can set the default time here all the way up to an hour. I usually keep it at 10 minutes. That's how, I long I, that's how long I typically water the lawn. And I can either press the play button, the X button to stop it, or a check mark if I want to add it into a queue. And as you can see, it's queued up there. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And we're going to exit out of there. And if we choose zones, again, this will show you all the zones, your little photos um, of the areas that are watered. And if we choose the front lawn again, this will give me some more information. It'll tell me the last time it's watered, the next time it's scheduled to water, and how much soil moisture there is. We go back on there and then we have my beehive at the bottom and you have an option for your account, the devices you have, device groups, watering history. It'll tell you the zones when they were last watered and the dates and notifications and you can enable notifications here. So pretty simple. It's a quick look at the native beehive app and it's a simple app where you can create a uh, programs and run them, turn them on and off, disable them. On this main screen, you can see right above the middle button, there's a rain delay. If I hit that, it'll delay it. It'll delay any scheduled timers for a day. But 
this timer actually is also connected to the internet so it'll actually do it automatically if there's rain scheduled it'll pop up a automatic rain delay so let's go ahead and see how we get all this into homebridge so here we are on my mac um, i've already gone ahead and logged into homebridge so what we're going to do is we're going to go into plugins and we're going to search for the orbit plugin and this is it the homebridge platform orbit so we're going to go ahead and install this by choosing install and it says it's installed and then we're going to go ahead and restart and once it's reloaded we're going to go back into plugins and we see there are no settings here so this plugin does not have settings so we're going to have to go to the github page and find out um, here it is and find out what the what we have to enter into the convict.json file and it goes under platforms and this is the the line of text we need to add under platform so what i'm going to do is i'm going to simply just copy this go back into homebridge i'm going to go to config and here it goes under platform so i'm going to go ahead and add it under the config text so i'm going to return i'm going to paste what i copied and i'm going to double check and everything is correct there should be a comma there and here we just need to enter our email and the password. So the email is the email you made for your account and the password is your password. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter those now. And password. And we're gonna hit save. I'm going to restart it again. And now everything has come. As you can see, it says Orbit has loaded here. So what we need to do now is we need to go into our iPhone and set it up under the Home app. So now we're going to go into the Home app and we should see it appear. And there it is. It just did pop up as soon as I opened up the Home app. So as you can see, it shows up here as a default room beehive timer. and default room front host. So I also do have a front host timer and that's how they appear in the home app under HomeKit once they're added to HomeBridge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this one. This is my front host timer. I'm just going to pretty much leave this one alone except I don't want it to be in the default room. I'm going to put this outside. So I'm going to choose outside and I'm just going to leave that one for now. That's not the important one. What The one we're working on now is the Beehive Timer. If we go into there, we can see we have all the zones here. Zone 1, Zone 2, 3, and 4. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Settings. And again, we're going to move this one to outside. Include in Favorites. And then here we have Zone 1. So from Zone 1, we can set the time. So zone one, I remember, was my front lawn. So I'm going to go ahead and name that lawn. And 10 minutes was my uh, time that I typically water the front lawn. So I'm going to click done, enable zone, and go back. And then I'm going to go ahead and name all of these. So zone two, zone three, zone four, zone five, and zone six. I'm going to name them to what I have them named um, on my beehive timer just so that I keep all the names straight in my head. So when I ask Siri to water them, instead of, instead of saying uh, Siri, water zone one, zone two, I can just say water the lawn, water the front shrub, uh, and so forth and so on. This was the backyard, I'm just gonna name it back. Then again, I can go into each one of these and change the default runtime for these. I'm just gonna leave them five minutes though, just for this demonstration. I'll go ahead in there and configure them later 
So now we have all the zones listed in plain, that means just easy to understand terms. The back, the front shrub, gate side of the, of the backyard, the lawn and the side yard and the trees. So that's all we have to do to get this into HomeKit under HomeBridge. And there's other information there included. So now, oh, let's open that back up. So now if we want to, let's, let's go ahead and go to the lawn, the front lawn. Say I want to water the front lawn, I just switch this on. You can see it says it's watering and it's counting down from nine minutes. And at the end of nine minutes, it'll shut itself off and it'll be complete its watering cycle. So let's go ahead and head to the backyard and ask Siri to water the backyard. So now we're in the backyard and with everything set up under Homebridge, I can now ask Siri to water the backyard. Hey Siri, water the back. And it works. Finally, years later, beehive timers can now function in HomeKit, although we do need HomeBridge. Uh, I'd like to note that I do still believe that Orbit, once upon a time, intended to bring HomeKit to their timers. In fact, I was in contact with a support person at Orbit who actually sent me the timer to review for HomeKit. I was informed that the HomeKit timers contained a MFI authentication chip indicated by the letters A, B, C, and D on the program button. Now all that is moot point now, and after some time, communication stopped and I didn't really want to press the issue. Uh, can't really speculate why Orbit still hasn't delivered on HomeKit for its timers, but possibly they ran into development or certification challenges. Uh, nevertheless, we have HomeBridge as a solution for now, and for the most part it works. Uh, for situations when I want to manually water the lawn, I can ask Siri. And for automated scheduling, the native app works just fine. So how many of you out there have been waiting for HomeKit on Beehive? Let me know down in the comments uh, if this solution works for you or if you wish that there was native support. And with that, I'll wrap it up for this video. And until the next one, please take care and be safe out there.